Welcome back to my video series, Don't Just Buy a House, Build a Home. And this four week series is about the dad experience. And today I got my good friend, Zach. How's it going, brother? Zach is a father of three. Correct. Okay, eight, six, and two. Yep. And married for almost 13 years. Almost 13 years. We'll yep. give ourselves credit for it. We're yeah. gonna get there. <laughs> yes, oh, at least. We at believe least. it. Yes, sir, for sure. <laughs> and uh, we've been talking about some of the uh, uh, some of the challenges that we have as dads. Mm -hmm. Why don't we start, Zach, by uh, going over uh, what's one thing that you have been uh, struggling with the most as a parent? Mm. It's a good question. Good way to start, too. Yeah. You just get real and, right. and vulnerable and Come jump in right in. Yeah. Um, the, I would say the thing that recently I've been struggling with, um, because a little bit of background, I started a, a job working currently as a financial advisor, and that's something that's fairly new to me. It's been the last 10 months. And, uh, and so my schedule for the longest time was very consistent and very flexible to where I could be home on a whim. I could be home whenever my, my wife needed me. If there was anything going on with the kids, I could get to it really quickly. Sporting events, school activities, whatever it was. And so I'm in this stage now as a, as a business owner where I'm, uh, I'm balancing the reality of having to to generate business mm -hmm. and put in time and activity into that and trying to balance that with home life. And so that's the, the challenge that I've been running into in the regards of parenting with that mm -hmm. is just trying to resolve the fact that even though my time in, at home or my time intentionally with my kids is shrinking mm -hmm. to really uh, make the most out of the time that I'm getting. And so I would say it's, it's more of an internal battle that I'm struggling with is I've just had probably close to anywhere from eight to 10 hours a week that I get less time in the evenings with my kids at dinner times, you know, eating, eating meals together. Mm -hmm. And so just having to overcome that obstacle and that hurdle in your head of just saying, you know, you're not prioritizing the right things. You're not doing the right things. You, that's how you feel? Yeah, I think at times that's that's a narrative that, that goes around in my head just because I'm, you know, balancing the two of work, home, mm -hmm. life. Um, and that's the narrative I battle with is just, are you committing to the right things? Are you doing the right things? Oh, uh, so. Man, I was going on a walk recently and I was just reflecting and thinking about my priorities mm -hmm. and the exact same thought came to mind. Do I have misplaced priorities? Mm -hmm. You know, am I chasing the wrong rabbit? Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah, because exactly it. You know, I'm uh, I'm like you. I'm also an independent mm -hmm. contractor, business owner, mm -hmm. uh, which means uh, I don't have a nine to five. Yeah, right? you know, I, I always have work. Yeah, uh, uh, in my mind, whether I'm at the office mm -hmm. or I'm here uh, with the kids. So how do you handle that inner tension, uh, especially the the mental aspect of it? Because even when we are at least in my case, even when I am present physically with my children, mm -hmm. many times mentally I'm gone. I'm yeah. still thinking about work. Totally. So is that something that you can relate to? And if so, how do you handle it? Yeah, totally. I can definitely relate. Let's mm -hmm. start there. Um, that's that's a tension that I'm constantly trying to navigate through. Um, some of the, the practices that I've really started to develop more recently, um, and this was something that um, comes out of uh, a faith tradition that that I that I adhere to. I've recently been listening and hearing in on a on a teaching series on the topic of Sabbath and uh, realizing the need for it. You know, for the longest time I worked in a church, and so it was easy to kind of just you know separate the the day to day activities of life. Um, but uh, with this practice, it was it was very much a we're going to set aside a set amount of time, and during that set amount of time, once a week, we're going to pause and we're going to reflect and we're just going to. Uh, be intentional about putting away work. So for me, that's putting away my phone <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for yeah. uh, for 24 hours. And it's also just re-engaging in activities that generate and create uh, opportunities for our family to engage and yeah. participate. So we go on walks together. We, we do stuff around the house that we know are going to help engage us as a family. Mm -hmm. um, and we're not perfect at that. I mean, we're just starting I mean, within the last three weeks. We've really just trying to been pressed into this practice. And, uh, and there's times where <laughs> we definitely fall short and the phone mm -hmm. gets picked up or, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but that's, that's kind of the, the, the mentality that we're trying to take to our, our week is just at least one day a week, really focus in and hone in on being a family, um, on our values and the mm -hmm. things that matter most to us and really trying to um, press into those. So. Yeah. So it sounds like spending quality time, intentional time, engaging with mm -hmm. your children yes. is a top value for you as a father. Yeah. Um, 
which now makes me think about our definition of uh, being a good dad. You know, all of us uh, may have varying yeah. uh, or various concepts of definitions of what that would look like. Mm -hmm. So for you, what does it look like? You know, just being a good dad and or what is your definition yeah. of a good dad? I, I, I boil it down to two main things um, and they're, they're two broad categories so they can kind of be, uh, you know, uh, bullet pointed a little bit further beyond that. But the two big things are create a safe space for my kids to, to grow and to, um, to, to be comfortable in, in our home. And then the second thing is to, to feel loved. So a safe space to, to just be known and, and to feel comfortable um, being themselves. Um, and then uh, to know that, that we genuinely care deeply about them and we are sacrificially giving up our, our lives to make sure that they have the best life possible. What is one example of creating a safe uh, space for them? Mm -hmm. And one example of one thing that you guys do, or that you do uh, specifically to make sure that they know they're loved. That's good. Um, I'll start with the loved one first, uh, because that's something that we, um, my wife and I have really tried to, you know, we had to work on a lot because we come from two different family dynamics where mm -hmm. love uh, in, in a very, um, a real way in her family was communicated through through the, the discipline of like just having structure and and expectations clear expectations as to what we want to you guys to behave like and act like and and accomplish um, and kind of knowing how to how to work within the context of those boundaries that her parents had set up my family was very much a, of an affectionate kind of touchy-feely kind yes. of like we're going to show our love through our affection and yeah. and you know that that warm kind of emotional type of mm -hmm. experience um, so in in the context of our family we've each of us kind of have taken some of those you know experiences from childhood and we've we try to cultivate those internally within the context of our house and uh, so the way I show love to my kids um, and I and I tell them this um, every night before we do our bedtime routine is really just spend intentional time with them in the evening ask them you know, what are some of the things that are really important to you right now? Um, what are the things that you're thinking about? What are the things that you're you're struggling with? What are some of the things that um, you're excited about? Mm -hmm. It's like the joys, the the, the pits. We, we call them the the rainbows and the rain clouds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, what are some of the things that you're that you're going through during the day? And uh, and to to be able to listen to them and then also emotionally connect with them. That's one of the ways that I've just, I've, I've received that from growing up. I received that, you know, that love that was there of just that my mom just pouring into me and constantly feeling, you know, filling out how we're doing and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and pouring out into us. And then the other way, my wife, my wife is more of the, you know, the get stuff done. Mm -hmm. And I've come to realize so much that that is such an act of love to our family mm -hmm. <laughs> creating. And that's like a environment of her love, but also a way of a way we create a safe space for them. Yeah. Um, we create a household that they, they can, you know, just be themselves in mm -hmm. and know that, um, that we're going to, we're going to take care of it. We're going to, um, we're going to provide their day-to-day -day needs, mm -hmm. um, the, the food, shelter, you know, um, you know, all of the, all of the physiological needs that, that, that kids have, but we're going to do so in a way that, you know, allows them to, um, to, to work through some of the tough stuff that they're going through at, at school or with friends or whatever that may look like. Yeah. Um, so bedtime is, I would say the big thing of how I, now have kind of interwoven that into our day-to-day -day routine because it's the one time that I know each day I'm going to get a chance to spend with each one of them. Interesting you say that. Uh, I'm reading a book. One of the chapters is about setting clear boundaries and respecting those for everyone in the family yeah. and viewing that as an act of love. Yeah. Uh, so to your point, uh, you know, some of the experts are validating that yeah. approach. <laughs> yeah. Um, That's good to hear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, and uh, we've been working on that too, uh, yeah. imperfectly, just yes, like you said. Exactly. Uh, well, I also have a similar routine in which dinner time, we go around the table and we ask our, our kids four questions. One is, what did you learn today? Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, what's one, one good thing that happened today? Yeah. What did you learn? What made you feel loved? And did anything make you sad? Mm -hmm. And then we just try to create conversations around those questions. Yeah. To your point, it's it just one way that, or one tool that we use to help them see, uh, uh, feel seen and heard and yeah. validated. Yeah. Now, uh, in listening to uh, uh, some of these tools, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, that we use as dads to um, love our kids, you know, somebody watching right now might, might be feeling. Uh, not so good about <laughs> themselves if 
they, they, they're getting the impression that, you know, we, we have it all together. <laughs> That's very true. And why don't we uh, show some vulnerability mm -hmm. and talk about some of the real challenges mm -hmm. that we experience as that yeah. I can start. For me, is being impatient. Mm -hmm. Especially with in the line of work that I'm in, if I let it, I can be 24 seven. Yeah. And it's hard for me to separate my work life from my home life. Yeah. And sometimes when things are a bit stressful at work, yes. I bring that home with me. And my children, unfortunately, sometimes pay for it, mm -hmm. which I'm working on. Uh, that's something that uh, certainly I'm not proud of. But also I, I want to create some level of awareness in terms of, uh, again, some of the real challenges that we go through. Yeah. Uh, and so why don't you uh, share uh, something that, again, uh, a real struggle that you're uh, currently going through? Yeah, this is a lifetime struggle for me. And it's mm -hmm. now then kind of like, because it's a struggle has, has taken on a characteristic within the context of my parenting. Yeah. But for me, it's very easy to disengage mentally from, mm. from scenarios, and especially when it, there's any conflict involved mm. in the environment. So mm. the home is ripe for conflict. <laughs> mm. I, don't, I, I don't think anyone would, uh, I don't know, if you, you find the house that doesn't have the conflict, mm. uh, you know, <laughs> you, you should probably uh, leave it because, yeah. <laughs> because you're gonna ruin it. It's just the reality of how, right. you know, people are and, and what we bring into relationships is we bring our brokenness and we bring our struggles and, and our selfishness and all those so things well create, yes. create conflict. Yeah. And so my go-to tendency is to avoid and just kind of disconnect, mm -hmm. whether that be just through jumping on my phone and <laughs> the, <laughs> the, uh, the, the stereotypical like dad's in the bathroom again kind of thing. <laughs> dad's on the toilet yeah. he's he's uh, he's getting away from from the family for a little while uh -huh. uh, well my thing is I just will all disengage but it'll be more mentally yeah. um, so I'll be present you know with the family physically, physically but, physically, mentally, but mentally yeah, yeah gone and so uh, I've just realized that one of the, the downsides of that in that process is my kids will stop coming to me for you know things that they're wanting to do, like activities that they're wanting to engage with or, you know, support that they need in order to accomplish a task or something like that. Because they'll just kind of realize like, oh, dad's going to get distracted and he's going to go off and do something else. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a challenge throughout my life. And one of the, the things that I've kind of had to um, remind myself of is, you know, your, your presence is necessary. Um, so what are you uh, actively doing to uh, change that behavior? I mean, one of those things going back to the the, the practice that we're, we're instituting is just a, a day where we disengage from technology, um, primarily phones. That's my go-to. I mean, we're in 21st century modern kind of like mm -hmm. society where to our phones are just such a huge point of engagement and connection and community and and business. They have. They, they facilitate almost everything that we accomplish and do in our lives. And it's so easy to, to get distracted when you, when you have that device in your hand because there's so much there. Um, recreation, you know, business, uh, you know, just entertainment, like all that stuff that you can just get sucked right into. So this device, if I let it, it's going to control my life. I need to, I need to create a, speaking back to boundaries, I need to create a boundary with it mm -hmm. because it impacts the way that I engage in my family and the way that I engage in relationships. Um, yeah, and uh, unfortunately, you know, with our phones and social media, it has been designed so yeah. that we lose that battle before we even begin. Yep. So we have to be really cautious on mm -hmm. that. There is also another book that I read and uh, when I was going to school actually a while ago. Okay. And my professor wrote it. No, oh, really. <laughs> and the title of it was "Put the effing phone down." Uh, very direct and very direct. <laughs> and uh, you can, I mean, you can tell what the book was about. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but really, well written, and you know, the premise of it is that you are allowing that was supposed to be a tool to actually control. Yeah. And distract you from what's truly important, exactly. which is being engaged right where your feet are, mm -hmm. um, and in this case, uh, with our children. Yeah. How do you uh, feel your upbringing and the behavior that your parents model for you has influenced mm. how you parent your children? Yeah, uh, gosh, the, the nurture side of the, <laughs> yeah. of the coin. That's, that's been something that I really, over the last 
you know, since being a parent, so the last eight years have really seen play out in my life so dramatically. Like the the parenting practices that I've I've inherited, primarily my mom, um, because I was, you know, my my dad was. Uh, you know, working 60 to 70 hours a week, he was a truck driver. Good amount of his time and commitment to the family was just bringing in an income, mm -hmm. and it was providing for our family. And because of that, he was drained. He did a lot of long hours, overnight shifts, and stuff like that, where long haul tr truck driving. Did you guys have a close relationship, or so no? the relationship that I had with my dad was very much facilitated around activities and sports because mm -hmm. it was something that it was he knew about and he could bring value to he played sports growing up and he was a really successful athlete and so that was his involvement in mine and my a lot of my siblings who played sports their life and so he he connected to us through that mm -hmm. my mom she did everything else <laughs> you know, she the home was her her kind of sanctuary where we had an environment where we had i'm the oldest of five kids so uh, so we had a space where we obviously had a lot of kids there, but we also had a lot of friends there constantly. Um, an environment where it was like a come as you are, just bring people Your here. Your mom must be the saint. Yeah. I just cannot imagine. So her name's, Five her, her name's Teresa, and Teresa. Uh, my friends called her Mother Teresa. Mother. <laughs> it, was, uh, wow. it was quite the environment. Yeah. Uh, and, and the reality was is just people would come and they would hang out and we would just, you know, whether it be playing video games in the basement or playing wiffle ball in the backyard yeah. or football in the backyard. I mean, it was it was an environment where kids around our neighborhood just felt safe. And that, that going back to kind of those two things, That's you know, beautiful. safety yeah. and, you know, f coming to a place yeah. in an environment where I could invite my friends into mm -hmm. allowed me to feel comfortable there and, uh, and really allowed me to build some deep relationships through that process. And so, uh, you know, going back to the question, um, some stuff I learned uh, that was really valuable was it's important to, um, to create a, a sanctuary in your house that your kids feel comfortable in mm -hmm. and they feel comfortable bringing people to. And, uh, and by doing that, then um, ultimately you increase your influence in their life. Mm -hmm. um, you increase your connection to them and the people that matter to them. And through that, you know, you, you can build deep relationships with mm -hmm. them because ultimately you're, you're going to detach from your parents. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're going to detach from them um, and you're going to attach on to social um, community and peers and, and other relationships. But the more you can kind of have those relationships be connected to the home, you know, the more that you'll be able to continue to have influence and connection with your kids. Yeah. So that's been something that uh, that I've I've been thinking about more. And my kids aren't quite in that stage where they're really branching out much into you know, having a whole bunch of social relationships. But that I don't, day's coming. That day's coming. <laughs> yes, it is yeah. very very rapidly. Yes. So <laughs> very rapidly. Yes. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you were lucky enough to have mm -hmm. great parents who model uh, servitude and yeah. hard work. Yeah, from your mom and, and for dad. sure. So yep they they gave me some of the the good traits that I definitely have within the context of you know a um, a desire to um, prioritize relationships. Yeah, um, relationships are very important to yeah. our family. And you know obviously you get the the the, the messy stuff as well. Yeah, <laughs> I gotta I gotta have your mom in this show. Yeah, <laughs> I have so many questions. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, mostly asking for advice and guidance. Yeah. <laughs> She's got plenty of experience. That's for sure. It sounds like it. Five <laughs> five kids. Yeah. To close it out, tell me how, when, everything is all said and done, and you're laying on your deathbed, mm. looking back at your relationship with your children, what do you want them to remember about you? I want them to remember that um, that I was about more than myself. Um, that I wanted to prioritize people. Um, relationships, you know, that was one of the things that continued to to be a consistent throughout the story that that I've lived in, um, and I want them to have a, a reminder that when they come and they think of dad, they think of the people that I brought into their life, but they also think about the people that they were able to bring into into our life, and and we were able to um, give them a safe place to to be known and loved. Um, so yeah. That's, I mean, that would be the consistent theme of what I would hope my kids would, would say. And, and then, you know, some of the other stuff would just be that, you know, that he took the time to uh, engage with us and know us. And, and uh, he broke down some, some cycles of, of, you know, tendencies and, and behaviors that he was prone to, but he, he chose to, to grow and he chose to be a better, better dad than the previous generation or the generation before that. And just that we were, he was progressing. 
I love it. You know yeah. what we're gonna do? We're gonna save this video, this conversation. I'm gonna send it over to there we go. To uh, I hope to your family. So one day when they grow up, yeah, they can listen exactly the beauty, how you want it to be remembered. Beauty of having digital uh, yes. <laughs> digital yes. reminders. We got some footprint here yeah. to, to pass along. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Thank you so much for uh, carving out the time and being here today and yeah. uh, sharing your experience. The dad experience. Yeah, well, thank um, you. And I hope you guys got something out of it. Yeah. And I'll see you again next week. Make it a great day. Mm -hmm.